Today's class is a 20 minute practice designed to increase your vital energy. So really the theme of the class is creating a more vibrant body and a vibrant mind. This time of the year when we're exiting winter, entering spring, we can be bringing along with us from winter feelings of lethargy, heaviness, um, just not feeling as motivated as we would like. And so today's practice is designed to sort of get the juice flowing, so to speak. We'll start with the mudra. The mudra today I'd like to teach you is called prana mudra. And anytime we use mudra, it's a subtle hand position that can shift our psychology, it can shift our energy. So for a prana mudra, you bring your um, ring finger and your pinky finger towards the palm of your hand and then place your thumb on top of the ring finger and pinky finger. Your pointer and middle finger are sort of making the peace sign and then you externally rotate your arms so that your palms face up. Allow your shoulders to relax. Sit well, create a nice tall spine and just a very subtle tuck of the chin. And then you can gently close your eyes. So this particular mudra, prana mudra, is designed to uplift our energy. The word prana actually means uh, energy, vitality. And so holding this mudra, just allow yourself to begin to settle in. In fact, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, feel yourself really fully arrive here for this practice. As you hold this mudra, maybe noticing the subtle shifting already in your body and your mind. And then beginning to deepen the breath. So as you inhale, feel that inhale travel from your pelvis all the way up the spine to the crown of the head. That's that uplifting energy. Sometimes call it pranavayu. And as you exhale, awareness moving from your crown back down your spine into your pelvis. So stay with this for a couple rounds, inhaling all the way up the spine to the crown of the head, feeling some lift, some rising up, a sense of elevation. And as you exhale, awareness moves back down the spine into the pelvis. Do two more of these. This particular mudra, prana mudra, also begins to open our heart space, and this is one of the primary focuses of our practice today, lifting our gaze, opening our heart, opening our side bodies to again create just essentially more space for us to expand and feel this natural sense of vitality we all carry. It just tends to get buried. So one more nice deep breath in, again, traveling your awareness up the spine. Maybe even this time, hold the breath at the top for just a moment, hover the breath, let that vitality of that prana grow, and then exhale awareness back down the spine into the pelvis. Releasing the mudra, bringing your palms together in front of your heart space. There's a particular intention you'd like to set, take a moment to do so now. Might even be related to our theme today of just enhancing our overall sense of vitality in our body and our mind, maybe in our heart, or perhaps you have a goal or an intention you'd like to see come to fruition in this next season. You could certainly set that as your focus for this practice. Once again, a deep breath, tracking that awareness from your pelvis all the way up to the crown. And as you exhale, bow towards hands and heart. Releasing the hands down, slowly lifting the head and blinking the eyes open. All right, so we'll start standing. You can take props, place them off the mat. In general, you won't necessarily need a prop, although if you like to use um, a block that may be something you have available. So taking a good stance, feet hip distance width apart, and just looking down at the feet, making sure that you're really 
grounding the four corners of the feet. So it's the big toe mound, the inner heel, the little toe mound and the outer heel. Just a slight baby bend in the knees, thighs moving back, so the whole seat moves back. And then as you draw your navel and your rib cage into the body, you feel this nice integration. Shoulders draw back, and that sternum, that heart space begins to lift and expand. Let's begin to connect with breath, just simple inhale, arms float into the sky. And as you exhale, arms float back down. Keep going here, inhale, arms float up. Exhale, arms float back down. So our gaze point today is horizon level, or maybe even as your arms float up, you could lift your gaze towards the sky. Exhale, arms float back down, gaze back to the horizon. So in these months when we're trying to release some of the heaviness of winter, allowing our gaze to lift is quite helpful. It's also helpful at enhancing our mood. So if you think about it, if your gaze is down towards the earth, which of course we need it to be in the winter months so we don't slip and fall on ice or snow, but gaze down is a definite uh, drawing in and this season we wanna start to expand our energy out. Okay, so inhale, arms float up. This time take your left hand to your right wrist. Pull that wrist up towards the sky and as you exhale, lean over to the left as you press your hips to the right. So starting to open our side body, creating more length through the torso. Inhale, back up through center. Switch sides, right hand to left wrist, lengthen up. And then exhale, lean over to the right as your hips move to the left. You'll feel a little more weight in that left foot. Let's do one more sequence here. Inhale, back through center, maybe gaze and heart space lifts. Left hand to right wrist, leaning to the left. So really pull that wrist, feeling that deep stretch all the way up your left side. Inhale, back through center, switch sides. Exhale, leaning to the left. Inhale, back through center, release the wrist. Exhale, W arms, we call these. So when you make the W arms, bottom tips of the shoulder blades draw together. Inhale, arms float up to the sky. Exhale, bending the elbows, really activating the shoulder blades together on your back. Two more of these, inhale, arms float up. Exhale, W arms. Inhale, arms float up. This time as you exhale and create the W arms, also bend your knees, coming into a nice variation of Utkatasana, so thighs back, hips back, belly ribs into the body. Keep pulling those rib, or excuse me, those shoulder blades together on the back. We'll take a nice deep inhale, classic Utkatasana. Another breath here. And now as you exhale, straighten the legs, dive forward into your first Uttanasana forward fold. Feet can be a little bit wider apart if your hamstrings feel tight. Shake out that head, release some of the tension in the neck. Now on this next inhale, lengthen up halfway. Fingers can stay on the earth, or you could lift all the way up to the shins, and then exhale, fold back into yourself. From here, walk your way into downward facing dog. And in down dog especially this first one, let yourself move a little bit. So you might bend your knees, sway the hips, bounce the pelvis a bit. Take a deep breath in, again, tracking that awareness from the pelvis up to the crown. And as you exhale, slowly Lower the knees down to the mat. Arriving in tabletop, walk the wrist back underneath the shoulders. Fingers are spread, toes can be curled under here. Take a deep breath in, pelvis tilts forward and the heart space lifts. As you exhale, rounding up like a cat. As you round, really activating belly rib cage into the body. So you start to connect more consciously to your core. Keep going at a pace that feels intuitive to you. So you might, especially at the start of a practice like this, 
already find yourself in some resistance about committing 20 minutes or so here to moving, Yoga Sutras talk about how resistance will always rise up in our practice. We have to know that it will be there. It'll just be a companion there. And yet I encourage you today to stick with this because at the end of this practice, this very brief practice today, you will feel more energized, more vital, more awake, more alive. One more set here. As you inhale this time into cow pose, really feel that heart space start to open, sternum lifting. And as you exhale and round, belly ribs into the body, walk your hands just slightly forward, curl your toes up and find yourself back in downward facing dog. On this next inhale, float the right leg into the sky. As you exhale, draw the right knee in towards the chest, stepping the right foot between the hands. Certainly it can be helpful to have blocks under the hands if that's a better variation for you. Walk your right foot more off to the right side of the mat and then place your right hand on your waist. Pause here, tune into that back leg. So the left leg is firm, it's buoyant, it's light. It's like the energy of spring here. Left heel rooting towards the back wall, but you're lengthening forward. And from that length, now you've got some space to start to pull right shoulder back. Extend right arm up. It's a little twisted lunge here. Nice deep breath in. Use your exhale to maybe twist and open just a bit more. And as you keep your back leg buoyant and lifted, drop your right arm more in alignment with your ear. So here we're getting into those nice long side bodies. Take one more breath here. Exhale, release the right hand to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg into the sky. To exhale, step the left foot through the hands. To find your bearings here in deep lunge, back leg is your prime focus to begin. That back leg, instead of wilting or dropping towards the floor, we want a nice lifted back leg. Right heel rooted towards the back wall. And whenever we're rooted, then we can really lengthen, rise, expand. Left foot moving over to the left side of the mat, left hand comes to the waist. Lengthen out again, pull left shoulder out to the back, twisting the other direction. Keeping that back leg buoyant, extend your left arm up. And then from here, you might drop left arm in alignment with your ear. Getting a little bit more of a deep side body stretch. Take a breath in and then as you exhale, release. Step back, down dog. Lower the knees down to the mat. Take the knees nice and wide. Sit back towards your heels for child's pose. So using child's pose as a chance to really connect with your breath. Keep settling your attention inward. And keep committing to yourself to stick with this practice that helps us tune more into joy and optimism and courage, which we actually really need this season of the year as we transition to spring. So from here, inhale back up to all fours. Walk the hands forward so the wrists come forward of the shoulders. Curl the toes under, back to downward facing dog. Walking hands backwards towards the feet. As you arrive in Uttanasana at the back of the mat. Bend your knees quite a bit, in fact so much that your torso sort of hangs over the thighs. Hips move back, a little more weight in the heels. Begin to walk the fingers forward and as you 
Lengthen the fingers forward. Keep rooting your thighs and your seat back. Pull the belly and ribs into the body and then inhale, start to come up. We'll stop in Utkatasana again, chair pose. Pelvis back, belly in. Gaze is grounded towards the earth. Take a breath. Exhale, courageously stay here as you sink into your hips just a bit more. And then as you inhale, rise up. Lift the heart this time, lift the gaze, that expansive energy we're going for. And then exhale, hands down, right in front of the heart. Pause. Release the hands, slowly walk to the front of the mat. We'll move through a series of sun salutes here. Hands come in front of the heart. Thighs back, pull the belly in, pull the ribs in, lengthen up. Release the hands down to the side of the body and then inhale, sweep arms up into the sky. Again, that lifted gaze, that expansive heart. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen up halfway. Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, fold as you step your left foot all the way back into a deep lunge. Once again, we walk the right foot off to the right just a bit and tune into the back leg. So you tune into the back leg, again, buoyant, strong, light back leg. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Shoulders over the waistline. And then lean the torso forward. So as the torso leans forward, you can get the thighs back just a bit. And we wanna keep the thighs in the back plane of the body. Belly ribs draw into the body. Inhale, float the arms up. We stay here for a nice variation of Virabhadrasana one, sometimes also called crescent lunge. So tune into that breath. As you inhale, can you rise, lift, feel some lightness in the upper body, and then exhale, maybe settle into that front thigh just a bit more. Again, inhale, awareness moving from the pelvis to the crown. Exhale, back down into the pelvis. One more nice deep breath in. This time as you exhale, hands down to the earth, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, float forward to plank. Nice strong, empowered plank pose. Exhale, hips lift up, back to dog. Two more times, fluid movement forward, plank pose. You pause and enjoy your strength. Exhale, dog. Inhale, forward plank. Pause here, heels back, belly ribs up. Gaze down towards the floor, take a breath. Exhale, lower all the way down. Flatten the tops of the feet. Keep your hands right in alignment with your chest. Firm feet, shins hug in. Feel those glutes start to be empowered. And then inhale, rise up, lift the chest, lift the hands. So hover the hands. This is W arms again. Bottom tips of the shoulder blades drawing together. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the hands. W arms. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. Again, hovered hands. Shoulder blades draw together. This time lift the legs as well. Take another breath, lift everything higher, and then exhale lower. Coming back through all fours, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg into the sky, and as you exhale, step the left foot through, deep lunge. Firm back leg, inhale, rise up. Get steady, shoulders over waistline. Inhale, arms float into the sky. So again, gaze point is horizon level. As you inhale and lengthen up, you could even start to shift gaze towards the ceiling. So you're getting a more lifted gaze. Keep following your breath. As you inhale, pelvis to crown, lengthen, expand. As you exhale, settle into that front thigh a bit more. One more breath here. Exhale, lower. Step the back foot forward, Uttanasana. Fold deeper on the exhale. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Slight bend in the knees. This time, inhale, arms out to the side. Big, expansive lift. Heart lifts, gaze lifts. Exhale, hands down in front of the heart. Pause. Tune in. Feel the heat lifting in the body, the heart beating. All beautiful signs that you are alive. All right, we're gonna flow one last time. Release the hands, inhale, arms out to the side. Big, expansive lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold in. As you fold in, really feel that belly draw up. Inhale, left foot back, deep lunge. Turn the back foot down. Work with your front foot to make sure that your front heel aligns with your back arch. Inhale, rise up. And start in Virabhadrasana two. This time, palms turn towards the sky, so you get a much more lifted heart space. Take a breath. Exhale, we stay. From here, inhale, transitioning into side angle. So right forearm down to the right thigh. Start with the left hand on the waist. Move your seat back. And then feel this right buttock draw under just a little bit more. As you stamp your left foot down, can you lengthen more through your left side and even this right side here? Taking the top arm up. Feeling that nice, beautiful, long space all the way up your left side body. And then lean the torso, the head back. As you open your side bodies, again, we open our capacity for more expansion, more energy, more space. Back to deep lunge, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward plank. Exhale, dog. Inhale, beautiful fluid movement forward, plank. Exhale, hips lift up and back, dog. Last time here, flowing forward to plank. Exhale, as you lower down, a little more pressure in that index finger and thumb, rising or uh, arriving on the belly, flatten the feet, firm the legs. Inhale, lift the chest again, hover the hands. Same concept here, W arms, shoulder blades hug together. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rising up, hovered hands. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise up, hover the hands. Now keep the chest lifted, place the hands back onto the earth. Inhale, rise a little higher, Bhujangasana, shoulders back. Heart forward, strong legs. Take another breath, can you lift just a little higher? Maybe even the gaze lifts and then exhale, lower down. Coming back through all fours, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg into the sky. As you exhale, step the left foot through, deep lunge. Turn the back foot down. Inhale, rise up, Virabhadrasana two. Turn the palms to face the sky. You feel that how that automatically lifts the heart. Take a breath in, exhale, left forearm to left thigh, right arm comes up in alignment with the ear. Take another deep breath here, torso back, head back, strong legs. Inhale, release. Stepping all the way back to down dog. Lower the knees down to the earth. Cross the ankles. Sit back. Extend the legs forward. In fact, move your heels all the way up towards the very front edge of the mat. Sitting tall, arms come up shoulder height. Turn palms towards the sky. Lengthen up and then as you exhale, tuck the chin and begin to roll down one vertebrae at a time. Ah, as you arrive on your back, bend your knees. 
Knees come in towards the chest, wrap arms around the shins and just rock side to side. Feet come back down to the floor. So to end your practice today, you could slip a block underneath your sacrum here if you'd like to spend a little bit of time in a supported bridge pose, Satubanda. This pose is particularly elevating for our mood and for the energy of our body. Otherwise, if your body is ready for Shavasana. If there's any other cool downs that would feel good to you, take the time to do, the, to, to do so, and then straightening the legs, settle into your final and most important pose of Shavasana. Deep breath in and out, and a little movement into the fingers and the toes. Start to bend the knees, rolling over onto your right side through the fetal position, and then pushing yourself back up to your seat. Finding something to elevate your hips on, whether it's a bolster or a block. Even if you're practicing at home, these essential components of the practice, centering, shavasana, ending the practice in a mindful way, remain really important. We'll end again with the prana mudra. So ring finger, pinky finger come in, thumb rest on the fingers, palms face up, close the eyes. Let's take a moment to observe this altered body and mind that you are finding yourself in. Hopefully feeling some more vitality, some more expansiveness, more spaciousness. It's one benefit if we can just get ourselves onto our yoga mat, we all know that we feel significantly different afterwards. So as we end our practice today, I'd like to share a quote that I've had on my bulletin board for many, many years. It's always spoken to me. And it feels especially relevant this time of year as we're moving into a season where it really is all about taking action, setting goals, doing things, coming alive again, just like the earth is coming alive. So this is a quote by Howard Thurman. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Namaste. Namaste.